What's up, everybody? It's your girl, D here with 8th House Energy, and I'm here to bring you the October 2021 uh, astrological analysis. So um, this is a little something that I like to do because I uh, do practice astrology uh, and um, as well as tarot. So I like to incorporate both into my channel and into my readings because I feel like astrology is um, a science that is pretty accurate. OK, because um, usually what's going on uh, with the planets has a direct effect on what's going on with us here. Uh, with, you know, what's going on with the planets above has a direct effect with what's going on uh, here on Earth with our behavior, our attitudes and the things that we go through. And so if you uh, begin to understand more about the planetary alignments and um, what's going on when it moves and things like that, you'll be able to better understand the energies that we're experiencing um, and therefore it'll help you, um, and it's also understanding your natal chart too. It'll help you to put you in a position where you're able to navigate, uh, through life a little bit easier because you understand, oh, okay, I'm feeling this way because these planetary alignments are going on or in on top of that, that is native to my birth chart, something like that. So let's get into it. Cause we got a lot of powerful energies going on. All right. From now until the rest of the year. To the end of the year, we've got a lot of powerful lunar energies going on. Um, so the first thing I want to start with is on October 1st, Mercury, you know, Mercury's in Libra right now and it's retrograde. Uh, it started retrograde as of today. The, today I'm um, recording this is uh, November. I'm sorry. It's September 27th. But Mercury went officially into retrograde, um, came out of the pre-shadow stages and went into retrograde on uh, September 27th and will be in heavy retrograde energy until the 10th of, I'm sorry, until the 18th of October. We will be in the post shadow period up until Halloween. So we will be feeling these Mercury retrograde energies in the house of Libra until Halloween. Now, what we also have going on is Mercury is going to be squaring Pluto, okay? And that is a very, that can be very violent, okay, as far as that energy. We do need to be careful, okay? I'm sorry, Mercury is squaring Pluto. Now, when you look at Mercury and Mars um, aspects, they can, you know, be conducive to violence anyway. Now, we have Mercury and Mars in Libra right now at the time of this uh, recording now Mars is going to be in Libra until October 30th so Mars and Mercury uh, will be moving around the same time so Mars will be going into Scorpio on October 30th and then on November 1st Mercury will be coming out of retrograde it'll still be in Libra but it'll be coming it'll be shifting out of retrograde so Mars and Mercury are in Libra right now now I, I did a, a Mercury retrograde reading for you all uh, for uh, Libra, Mercury retrograde in Libra. Now, Libra to me, simply, it talks about, you know, your relationships, the various types of relationships you have, whether it's with your friends, whether it's with your family members, whether it's with your lovers, whether it's with your business partners. It also deals with business contracts. It also deals with pol politics, politicians, um, marriages, of course, any type of relationship. Because if you think about the word politic, politic means the rules and regulations in which you engage, the communication, the language, the etiquette involved, you know, that's what politicking and politicking or politics is derived from. It's the way that you go about doing things. And so in order for you to do things, you have to be able to relate to people. So that's what politicking is to me. Like it's a slang word for a lot of us. It's like, okay, I was just politicking with such and such yesterday. You know, some of you may not have heard that slang. Some of you may have. It's somewhat old, right? But that's where it came from. That's what it derived from. So, you know, we have Mars there and Mercury there. Now, Mars and Mercury aspects can, you know, it can lead to violence, you know, depending on what's going on. Because Mercury is a communicator. Mercury is going to communicate whatever planet, whatever energy it's next to. So Mars can be a very violent planet, especially in the house of Libra when we're dealing with justice. All right. So we're dealing with justice on the 3D realm, meaning courts. You know, and why do people go to court? People go to court because of all sorts of things. But that can raise people's energies and get them frustrated. And people can become violent, especially when Mars is there. It it exacerbates it. You know, it fuels the fire. 
So, you know, you you can look in the news and see what's going on and just people around you, places, you, you know, and maybe just your temper, you may feel it, you know, going up a bit or you feel yourself being a little bit more impatient or maybe more energetic or assertive or more intense. Um, that's why, okay? Especially when you have people who right now with Mercury and retrograde, people are being exonerated for crimes they didn't commit. People who co-conspired in crimes that the main conspirer was charged for, now they're being brought to justice. People who thought they got away with things are now, you know, it's being caught up. They're getting caught up and getting put into the, uh, you know, into the system, the 3D uh, legal system. Um, people are retaliating against each other. OK, because of what, you know, the energies that are going on right now, especially with Mercury in Libra and Mars in Libra, people are frustrated and aggravated. They may have felt that they they're taking justice into their own hands. OK, especially if there's something that somebody got away with and they didn't get caught. You got a lot of that undercurrent going on. And then on top of that, on October 1st, Mercury is going to square Pluto. That's a very violent that can be very violent as far as those aspects. Right. So we got to be careful. We got to try to, you know, keep cool as much as possible. Try not to argue with people. If you're out and somebody, you know, tries to run you off the road, not necessarily try to run you off the road in that extreme, but just try to be cool. OK, because it's a very the energies are very uh, conducive to violence. OK, rape, violence, murder. It, it can get deep. OK, so we got to be we got to be cool. All right. Um. So I really wanted to talk about that and get that energy going. Also, you know, with we got other planets that are coming out of retrograde. So we talked about Mercury being in retrograde. We talked about Mars, both of them being in Libra. Uh, one more thing about Mercury in retrograde and, and Mars there as well. Not only are we dealing with uh, justice being served on the 3D realm, we're dealing with that on the spiritual realm as well. So a lot of people are dealing with, you know, spirits coming at them, getting them back for the things that they thought they got away with. Even those who have passed on, are being judged in their own realms as well. So it, it's not just here on the 3D realm. You know, um, galactic-wide, you know, court is being served, okay? And some of that trickles down into our realm as well. And some of the things that go on in our, our realm, of course, um, are a direct reflection of what's going on in the upper realms. So we have to keep that in mind, especially those of us who are on a spiritual level. And if you, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, right? So moving on. I made some notes here, so give me a second. Let me make just take a look at that and get that done out of the way. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the planets who are moving, just regular planets. So right now, Venus is in Scorpio, um, and it will be there until October 7th, and then it will go into Sag. Now, Venus in Scorpio is a very interesting energy. Venus is all about uh, how you show love and appreciation. It's all about uh, indulgences, uh, whether it's material indulgences or physical indulgences. And in the house of Scorpio, uh, where, you know, you're dealing with hidden, hidden feelings, hidden emotions. Uh, you're dealing with sex, death, uh, sex, death, crime, you know, power struggles between people. So we got that going on as well as the energies going on with Mercury and retrograde and, and, and Libra as well as Mars there. And then on October 1st, Mercury squaring Pluto. Speaking of Pluto, Pluto is in Capricorn right now and Pluto is going to be coming out of, re it's in retrograde in Capricorn. It's going to be coming out of retrograde in Capricorn on October 5th. Now, some of the things that we see worldly, um, as far as Pluto is concerned, like, for example, Haiti is a Pluto country. Um, I'm sorry, Haiti is a Capricorn country, as well as uh, Mexico. They're both Capricorn countries, meaning they were established in during the season of Capricorn. I believe Haiti was January 1, 1804, and I wrote this down. Mexico was December uh, 28, 1836. And if you've been paying attention to the news, you know you have a lot of uh, Haitian refugees coming up and they're on the, uh, the Mexican border, uh, the Mexican-U.S. border. Okay, they're coming through Mexico and they're right there. They're coming in through the border there. So, you know, Pluto's all about power struggles, okay? It's also about death and rebirth. So a lot of that type of energy is going on specifically in those countries right now with people leaving. And then right before, I believe it was maybe, was it uh, within the last 30 days, Haiti had an earthquake, which is why a lot of the people who are leaving Haiti because of, you know, the destruction that went on because of the earthquake, you know, they're leaving the country and they're coming in through Mexico and then coming up through the United States, through Mexico, through the, through the United States. So you got all of this going on. 
right? And so if you look at the United States, it's not a Capricorn country, but it's the opposite polarity. It's a Cancerian country because our birthday is July 4th. So Capricorn and Cancer are opposite polarities. So you see how the opposite polarities of these signs uh, affect each other. So I just wanted to give an example of that. So, you know, there's a lot of tension going on all over the world right now. Now, we talked about Venus in Scorpio. Venus is in Scorpio until October 7th, and then it's going into Sagittarius. Sagittarius is an energy of higher education, higher knowledge, uh, wisdom, uh, foreign travel, uh, publishing, um, your philosophy, your ways, you know, your, your philosophy on life, your spirituality, your religious views, things like that. Okay, so Venus, uh, the, the uh, planet of love and appreciation and indulgence is, is going into that energy. So a lot of people are going to be coming, they're, they're going to be coming, embracing more so their spirituality, their religious beliefs, because of all of the mayhem and madness that's going on. Naturally, people are going to be gravitating towards their spiritual beliefs uh, to cope and to get through. Okay, so that's the type of thing you're going to be seeing with Venus going into uh, Sagittarius. All right, so I did that. I had to make a note. So let's talk about the planet, the other two planets that are going direct in October, because we have three planets in total going direct in October. Thank God. Right. So we talked about uh, Pluto in Capricorn going direct on October 5th. All right. So Pluto, like I said, is about power struggles. It's about death and rebirth. It's about psychic abilities. Um and, um, you know, that death and rebirth can be in any aspect. So it could be on a spiritual level. It could be on a physical level. Um, and sometimes death and rebirth has to do with violence, which is why I was talking to you about Mars squaring Pluto. You know, Mars is the aggressor. Mars is, is the, the uh, god of war. So when it's squaring Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth and power struggles, you understand why this is a critical time here and we need to be careful of our environment and our surroundings. You know, um, it's very, very important, you know, that you be careful because, again, Mars is very aggressive and Pluto is Pluto just carries out the transformation. But Mars is the aggressor. All right, so be careful, watch your children, watch what you're doing, ladies, watch where you are, make sure you're watching your drinks, you're not out here, you know, just being, um, you know, not paying attention to what's going on around you, make sure you keep your temper cool, okay, so uh, uh, we'll get off of that. Now, um, Jupiter and Saturn are both going direct in October as well. They are both in the house of Aquarius right now, you know, Aquarius is all about uh, forward movement. It's all about long-term stability, long-term growth, long-term planning. It's all about your social life, people you connect with and you build long-term friendships with. You know, and a lot of these people are in organizations that you may be involved with, whether it's your chess club, whether it's your Masons, whether it's your Eastern Stars, whether it's your, um, you know, your Red Cross, your Blue Cross, your Red Cross, um, organizations that are, are together for a call for a humanitarian cause or for one common cause. Um, so we have Jupiter there. Jupiter is the planet of good fortune. All right. It's the planet of expansion and growth. And then we have Saturn there. Saturn is just the opposite. It's, it's, it's a constrictor. Saturn is the disciplinarian. Saturn is the planet that tells you, okay, it's time to grow up. Okay. It's time to grow up. No more Peter Pan. You know, no more I'm a Toys R Us kid. It's time to grow up. So that's why a lot of people don't like Saturn. Saturn just makes you mature because you have to. It's father time. And it's in the house of Aquarius. So some people have outgrown friendships. They've outgrown organizations and groups that they've been in. And then on the flip side, some people are, um, you know, they're questioning the, que the groups and the organizations and the friendships they have. As far as that's what Saturn will make you do, it'll make you question it to see if you've outgrown it. Jupiter will make you look at, okay, damn, I didn't take a risk on doing something. Why didn't I take that risk? Or I took that risk and I failed. Damn, what do I need to do to get that straightened out? So when Jupiter and uh, Saturn was indirect, this is what it was making us think about. Saturn was making us think about what do you need to let go of? What routines and patterns do you need to change? Where do you need to be more disciplined at? Where do you need to be more mature at when it comes to your friends and these organizations and your long-term planning and your long-term growth? So now that these planets are going direct, Jupiter and Saturn have expected us to already review why we haven't done certain things or why we have these relationships. And then when they go direct, we're supposed to move forward now. Okay, so yeah, Saturn says, okay, you've outgrown this relationship. So yes, okay, now I need to leave that behind and I need to move on and meet people who are more like-minded based on my level of maturity. 
things like that. So it's like, yeah, I've graduated from high school now. You know, I, yeah, I still got a few friends in high school, but I'm in college now. So I need to make college friends, right? It's that type of thing with Saturn. It's time for you to move on. And so, you know, Saturn kicks your butt when, it, when you're not able to move on. That's when Saturn kicks your ass. It's because Saturn says move on and you don't. Jupiter basically will kick your butt if you try to take a risk on something because you're being greedy, you want excessive, and you don't plan it out. Because Jupiter is a spontaneous energy, all right? And some people have taken some risk on things and they realize that they've lost out. Or some people have regretted not taking a risk when they should have. So now, and when it comes to your friends, your long-term plans, organizations that, that are together for um, a common cause, now people are looking to join these groups. They're looking to expand uh, because they're looking to bring more like-minded people in. There could be a changing of the guard in these organizations where the people in the higher posts and higher positions are moving out. So new blood is coming in. All right. So that type of thing is going on with Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. All right. So we talked about that. Now, there's two planets that are going to be staying retrograde uh, for a little longer. Uh, Uranus is in retrograde in the house of Taurus okay Uranus is all about surprise you know Uranus is that I don't give a damn rebellious type of energy and it's in retrograde in Taurus Taurus is the house of our money making our money making house like our money making potential how much money can you make uh, your possessions your real estate the things you own also about your self-worth and self-value so with Uranus there in retrograde Uranus is making people rebel against you know, people treating them a certain way and not feeling, you know, okay, how can I say this? So say you're around people who didn't treat you right, who weren't good to you, things like that. Um, Uranus in retrograde in the house of self-worth and self-value will make you re-examine those relationships and those people that you are around. And you may decide, you know what, I don't want this anymore, but the, and I'm not going to talk to you anymore. But the people who you're doing this to or responding to in that way are looking at you like, where the hell did that come from out of the blue? You know, that's Uranus energy, out of the blue, spontaneous. But you could have been feeling this way all this time, but you've never expressed it. And maybe in the way that you express, express it is so rebellious that you just lash out, that's Uranus in retrograde in Taurus. All right? So also what it is, Uranus also deals with... Um, technology it deals with the internet it deals with the sciences it deals with the inner genius in you and Taurus is about how you make money so we've seen a lot of people quit the uh, traditional brick and mortar going to the job punching in to uh, acquire work online okay to make money online so we see a whole lot of that now especially with post-covid while we're still in those you know, post-COVID stages, but this is what we've seen. This is one of the major uh, transitions that we've seen. People uh, having to make money online because they're not able to go into brick and mortars and work, all right? So we see that with um, Uranus and Taurus. Now, that's going to be um, in retrograde until January 18th. So anytime a planet is in retrograde, it makes you think about different ways. to Like, Uranus is going to make you think about what did I take a risk on? What should I have taken a risk on? Oh, I rebelled with that. Should I have done that? You know, that type of thing. And then when it goes direct in January, then it will start moving forward. And then you'll be, you know, out of the review area of it. Now, Neptune is in retrograde in Pisces. Okay, that's a whole nother breath. So Pisces is the house of karma. So we're dealing with karma with uh, Libra. And we're dealing with karma with Pisces. Okay, uh, so Pisces is... The difference between Libra and Karma is in, in Libra with Karma and Pisces with Karma is Pisces is like your karma that you wrap up at the end of your life type of thing. Where uh, Libra Karma is Karma wrapping up different cycles, right? Um, but Pisces does deal with the end of life cycles and things like that. Pisces is also the house of the, the uh, subconscious, the unconscious, excuse me, the unconscious, where you don't really have anything to do with that. That's like your wiring, <laughs> you know, your internal wiring with you and your creator and how you were brought here. That's that relationship house. That's that house there. You really don't have too much control over that. But that house does deal with karma. Okay, it deals with hidden friends, hidden enemies on the 3D realm as well as the spiritual realm. Um, it deals with jails, prisons, okay, places where people go to be isolated or where they isolate themselves. So, you know, mental asylums, none, you know, where the nuns go, the monasteries, uh, jails, uh, alcohol rehabilitation centers, hospitals. These places are all covered under Pisces energy. 
And then you have Neptune, who is the ruler of Pisces. Neptune deals with illusions, the creative imagination, uh, psychic powers and psychic abilities. Now, Pisces also deals with things like um, addictions, uh, drugs, uh, overdoses, poisoning, things like that. But, you know, those are some of the things that go on with, with Pisces. But Neptune is in retrograde. When Neptune is in retrograde, the illusions of Neptune disappear. You're able to see things for what they are. Like the rose-colored glasses drop off. So whatever illusions people around you were putting up or personas that they were putting up, now that Neptune is in retrograde, you're starting to sense, you know, because Neptune is a psychic ability, so your intuition is telling you, hmm, something's up with that person. They're acting one way, but their energy is telling me something different. I don't really believe what they're telling me. I don't really believe that they, you know, have this nice house out in, in the Hamptons. Because every time I uh, they tell me, they invite me, when I ask them when they're going to be out there, they're always giving me some type of runaround as to when they're, you know, why they're not going to be there or they're not doing it. And we've been going over this for two years now. So I don't think they have a house in, 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 in the Hamptons. And then with Neptune and Retrograde, you may find out that they actually don't. For whatever reason. So, you know, the illusions this person was painting as if they were, you know, they had this house, but then you find out they don't. So that's just a basic dumbed down example of, you know, Neptune and retrograde showing you what it is. And also what Neptune and retrograde is, is showing you that people around you, because Pisces deals with hidden enemies. It shows you that the people who were around you who were pretending to be your friends, it shows you that they're really not. Because your intuition is going to tell you, hmm, this person is acting really suspect to me. Or acting really strange. And then something may come out and you may find out, oh, so that's what they've been hiding. So they've been actually sleeping around with my husband. Or they've been trying to, you know, um, you know, uh, turn my friends against me. Because a friend may have finally come to you and told you what was going on. Something like that. So that's just examples of Neptune in retrograde in Pisces. Now, Neptune's going to be in retrograde till November 30th, okay? So we got that done. Also, what you want to take in mind and, and take into consideration, oh, yeah, the, I talked about the new moon in Libra on October 6th. Well, the new moon in Libra is coming on October 6th, and that has to deal with violence as well. People wanting revenge, people wanting their own justice. They're not getting their justice, you know, because that's in the house of Libra. So there's going to be, you know, you guys got to really just be cool if you can, as much as possible. Because now that you have this knowledge and you have this understanding of what these energies are going to be bringing in, you're probably already seeing it. Now you can sit back and say, damn, okay, let me make sure that I'm calm and I'm cool and I don't get crazy and I don't get upset about what's going on. And I know that if I start feeling that, I should pay attention to it, be cognizant of it, and maybe try to direct that energy elsewhere. What you may want to do is work out. If you ain't never worked out before and you start feeling an energy building up and you start feeling intense energies, you know, the first 15, 30 days of October, you know, the whole month of October, do something to exert that energy. Get it out. If you're in a relationship and you got a lover, have some great sex. Have some real good, intimate sex. All right. If you're not, try to work out. Try to do something to exert that energy and burn that energy up because we're going to be feeling that. All right. So also what's going on is the North Node right now is in Gemini and the South Node is in Sagittarius. So that energy is going to be changing. All right. So we are embarking on uh, the energies, the, the energies, the nodal energies that are going to set that change in motion because we have a lunar eclipse coming in November. And I'll talk more about that when I do the November one. But, you know, we're feeling the energies already because you can start feeling it a month ahead with the uh, nodal changes. I mean, with the uh, lunar eclipses and the solar eclipses. So we have a lunar eclipse on November 18th. Um, and then two weeks later, we'll have a solar eclipse. The lunar eclipse will be partial, but it'll be on November 18th or 19th, depending on where you are in the world. And then always after a lunar eclipse, two weeks later comes a solar eclipse, which will be around December 4th. OK, so those um, eclipses are setting us up to change out of the uh, Gemini North Node, Sagittarius South Node into Taurus North Node, Scorpio South Node. Now, that happens on January 18th, 2022. So we are wrapping up the nodal energies of Gemini, North Node, Sagittarius, South Node. Uh, and we're starting to feel those nodal energies as well. So there's a lot of lunar 
energies. So with Gemini, the you know, in the North Node, you know, in the South Node, there were lessons that we were supposed to learn. learn. The nodes, I believe they change every two and a half years or two years. But the, the themes for Gemini were communication, of course, news, gossip, transmission of information, like ideas and thoughts, marketing and promotion, local community, uh, you know, like the energy of playful curiosity and, and details, little details in life. Sagittarius, the South Node, that dealt with cultural beliefs, <clears throat> religion, global community, internal affairs, long distance travel, higher education, publishing, um, freedom and adventure, philosophy, and just looking at things from a glass half full type of thing. So if you look back at the, pa the past two years, you'll see a lot of the situations and scenarios that we've dealt with in our, lo in, our, in our lives on a micro level, as well as what's been going on in the world on a macro level, um, have, felt, have fallen under the umbrellas of Gemini influences and Sagittarius influence. The North Node is all about your destiny and where you're headed. The South Node is all about where you're coming from and the energies that you want to incorporate, that you've already comfortable with, and that you want to incorporate and change and, and mature and grow with. So we're in these pre-eclipse um, energies right now for the uh, lunar eclipse that's going to start in November. So all of these lunar energies and all, the, you know, you know, the moon deals with our emotions and our feelings. So just keep in mind that this is going to be a very interesting and intense time this winter. You would think because it's the weather's cooling off that maybe things would cool down, but... It doesn't seem like it would be that way. So just keep that in mind. And, um, you know, if you want to refer back to this, you know, during the um, rest of the year, you can. But I will be coming in on November and giving you a heads up of, of what's going on as well with the energies as they change, you know, for the month of November. So that has been the uh, October astrological analysis. That's just a little snapshot and my perspective on based on what I've been seeing and what I've been experiencing and what I've been studying um, with the uh, astrological uh, alignments. And so hopefully you are able to get something out of that and you're able to use that information um, in a manner that's going to serve you um, serve you well. So with that being said, um, I want to thank you for taking the time to check out the video. Um, feel free to leave a comment uh, in reference to these energies, especially if you're relating to it and you understand it and you've experienced some of it and you're feeling it. Let me know. All right. If you need a personal reading, my information is in the box below. I wish you guys the best and I want to say happy October to you and keep cool. Okay. Keep cool. Later.